brought new scrutiny in recent days. One powerful woman is standing up for him, his daughter, Ivanka. We talked yesterday at New York's Trump Tower, where she pushed back against the latest accusations. I'm going to ask you about the New York Times. They ran a front page article this Sunday about your father and the treatment of women. Did you read it? I did, and I found it to be pretty disturbing based on the facts as I know them, and obviously I very much know them, both in the capacity as a daughter and um, in the capacity as an executive who's worked alongside of him at this company for over a decade. So I was bothered by it, but it's largely been discredited since. So most of the time when stories are inaccurate, they're not discredited, and I will be frustrated by that. But in this case, I think they went so far. They had such a strong thesis and created facts to um, reinforce it. And, you know, I think that narrative has been playing out now, and there's backlash on, in that regard. I do want to read you from, from part of the article. It says, many of the women interviewed, quote, reveal unwelcome romantic advances, unending commentary on the female form, a shrewd reliance on ambitious women, and unsettling workplace conduct. Is there unending commentary on the female form? No. No. And again, this is an article that is widely being discredited. The lead person who was interviewed um, for the story and that the story opens up with is all over the news yesterday saying that they manipulated what she was saying. You know, I don't find it that meaningful to comment on this particular story because I think the, the facts are starting to speak for themselves. But you have worked so closely with your dad. There's another woman who is quoted in the article that says that Donald Trump groped her at a, uh, yeah. you know, at a meeting, at a business meeting. Yeah, well, I... Look, I'm not in every interaction my father has, but he's not a groper. It's not who he is. And, and I've known my father, obviously, my whole life, and he has total respect for women. He was promoting women in development and construction at a time when it was unheard of. There was no trend towards equality in the real estate and construction industry back in the 1980s. And he was doing it because he believes ultimately in merit. He's running against a woman. And he has said that he's already using gender as a way to run against her. Well, is he using gender or is she using gender? I think she's using gender as well. I'm not going to advocate for a female leader who I'm voting for solely on the basis of gender. And I think a lot of people feel that way. You've supported Hillary Clinton in the past financially, voted for her? Yes. Do you think bringing up her husband's past infidelities, this discussion, is worthy of a presidential campaign? You would have to ask my father that. I mean, I'm not, you know, my, my role is in politics. My role is running our business. But I do want to get your take on this because you're a very successful businesswoman and you're a mother. And the, the discourse in this campaign and the tone in this campaign, I mean, your dad loves to tweet and he has called uh, women crazy. He's called them crooked. That's what he calls Hillary Clinton. He's even used the word bimbo. I mean, do you ever look at those tweets and say, Dad, you know, tone it down a bit? I've certainly thought that certain things should be toned down, but not necessarily in, in relation to that. When I think about myself as a feminist, it's important that women are treated equally. And he treats women and men equally. The polls show he has a 69% unfavorable rating among women. How does he change that? You would have to ask him. Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, he's, he's running his campaign. I think that people are just starting to see who he is. The race is different now, and I think that people will be able to see the softer side of him. He's going to be attacked in a different way, but it's different when you're being attacked by one person as opposed to uh, 16. Ivanka works to stay out of the political spotlight. In our conversation, we explored the gender issue and what it means to be a working woman. And even away from the campaign trail, her family is putting its own stamp on Washington with the launch of the Trump International Hotel. We are actually a year ahead of schedule, a little over a year, and under budget, which I think is a first for Pennsylvania Avenue. So we're very, very proud of that, and, and it's going to be just a magnificent property. You mean under budget because it's, it's just a few blocks from the U.S. Capitol? Not a lot in D.C. comes in ahead of schedule and under budget. <laughs> so we're feeling pretty good about that, especially given the complexities of developing um, a, a historic building. And look at how perfectly the slabs are all matched. This fall will be a very busy time for the Trump family. You guys have made some good progress. 
One of Ivanka Trump's top projects, the old post office transformation, look at that view of the monument, is set to open in September. While working on the hotel's renovation, she gave birth to her third child. America is going to be strong again. And her father's America become the presumptive Republican nominee for president. In that role, he would no longer run the Trump Organization. Would you like to be a successor? I, it's not something I prioritize. You know, my brothers and I, early on, we said to one another that as a collective, we could do far more than any of us could do individually. And I really believe that. So I am, for me, title is largely irrelevant. I want to show up at work and love what I do and be able to work on projects that I'm passionate about. This is your office in here. She's especially passionate about curating her own lifestyle brand, featured most prominently on IvankaTrump.com. We wanted to create the ultimate work bag. With everything from style. We have a little set up. To parenting advice for the working woman. For me, one of my life's mission is, is to disrupt these dated concepts of what it really looks like and means to be a working woman. The expression working men is never heard in conjunction, but, but people still talk about this sort of working woman and there's a bit of negativity um, to that connotation. So I think really celebrating um, the many different ways women are working at their lives and architecting lives that they want to live. It sounds like you want to be in the middle of that disruption. I do. I would be so proud if I could be or play just a small role in, in changing that narrative. Changing and defining the narrative seems synonymous with Trump these days. While her father's campaign for president has been marked by political frenzy and controversy and the crowds to match, Ivanka's brand and social media are devoid of politics. I am not focused on politics. I'm focused on our business. A business she was raised to run. Did you go to the office when you were a kid? All the time. You did? All the time. Yeah. So after school, I would go, um, I would come up and, and sit on the floor of my father's office and I'd just play. The woman brought up inside the halls of Trump Tower knows of no glass ceilings. The way my father raised me was really informative of, of how I think about my role as a, a female and how I view myself in a professional and personal capacity. So he encouraged me to set the bar very high for myself, to uh, set great goals for myself, but he also celebrates the fact that I'm a mother of three children, his grandchildren, and, and um, wife to my husband is, um, is something that I feel very blessed about. He believes that it's for me to choose ultimately what my life should look like and, and to architect a life that I want for myself and that will make me happy.